The big question looming over the budget is whether this will be enough to save the Tories. I don't think it will. But with no shock announcements or big cuts to the highest tax burdens since the Second World War, will this be even enough to get close to a hung palm? It seems to be fodder for Keir Starmer. He sort of ate it up. There we have it, the last desperate act of a party that has failed. Yeah! Britain in recession. The national credit card maxed out. And despite the measures today, the highest tax burden for 70 years. Yeah! The first parliament since records began to see living standards fall, confirmed by this budget today. That is their record. Yeah! It is still their record. Give with one hand and take even more with the yeah. other. Yeah, I think she just lose a bit of weight here. Uh, on the hot desk tonight, the Director of Communications at the Henry Jackson Society, Megan Gittos, and Barrister and Futurist Andrew Eborn. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. I mean, it was totally underwhelming, this, wasn't it? I mean, I've been arguing all day that we shouldn't even cover it. That's how bad it is. Shouldn't even bother. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we're sort of supposed to, so here we are. Um, what, do you make, what did you make of it, Megan? I mean, was, there was nothing in it. I mean, I was actually... I, I'm, I'm not normally drawn to watching the whole thing, but because I was able to, I did. And, God, it was dull. Yeah, it was exceptionally dull. Um, and it feels like constantly he's leading up to doing something yeah. and then he doesn't do it. I've right. been feeling this the whole time Rishi's been Prime Minister. In your head, you kind of just have the answers for him and he just right. doesn't go through with it. Um, I'm not too displeased with a number of the policies. Um, it might not be... I know your previous guest would like more duty taken off. Part of me thinks, is it the right time because... For, you know, for consumers, they don't necessarily feel it as much. But then again, we need growth. Yeah. It's these small little any. things. Because actually, what is taken off for a lot of people with national um, national insurance, the money they're saving, they're going to be paying their debts off or catching up yeah. with bills. Actually, we need tax levies that are going to create growth. Right. This. Well, I mean, Andrew, it looks to me like I think the figure is something like, what, £75 a month? Yes. You're going to be better off. Uh, with the national insurance cut. I actually also looked up a thing on the Telegraph website yesterday, uh, which was that you could calculate exactly how much you would save over yes. a year. If you're self-employed, basically it's 550 quid, no matter how much money you make. So it's a sort of almost a flat rate. Yeah. And so, you know, an awful lot of people in this country are self-employed, so national insurance to yeah. them isn't really a big thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There were no hats and certainly no rabbits pulled None out at all. of them. Extraordinary. If they had pulled a rabbit out, it would have probably lost its head. It would have been a dead <laughs> rabbit. I think you're right. But you it's know. certainly... And what, what is clear, Mike, is it's not an election budget. So what all the people were saying we were going to have it May the 2nd yeah, with yeah. the election, there's no way. It's going to kick it into the long grass probably in around November time uh, because by then he's hopefully the, the economy is going to get any better. He started off by saying the very predictable thing about inflation. They knew it was going to come down to yeah. 11%. That was an easy win. Right. Uh, what I love is about the AI stuff, right. which is sort of buried in there. The investment in AI, my baby as, yeah. as a futurist, is to turn around and say they are going to invest. The big return they're going to get on those phenomenal, the advances in the National Health Service, the efficiencies and so on and so forth, will, will but be But what great. exactly are they going to invest in, though? Because every time the government goes anywhere near anything to do with technology, yes. they massively screw it up. Yeah. I mean, who can forget the NHS, you know, £4 billion pound computer system? Yeah, which now lies at the bottom of the North Sea somewhere because nobody could figure out how it worked. No, you're absolutely right. But we punch way above our weight in AI. So invest in the brainchild, the, the brains that we have in, in Britain. Put the AI into Britain and make that make sense. Because that's what they need to do. The more research we can do into this area, making sure that it's safe... Yeah, that's fine. But who's doing the research? It's private companies which make private yeah. profits, which then get government money, which I think is entirely wrong. Yeah. You know, the people need some money back after 14 years of being milked absolutely dry. You know, nobody's got any more to left to give them. No, no, you're, you're absolutely... It needs to be built back into that sort of mm. system. But talking about efficiency, so in the NHS, with this horrendous waiting list, yeah. you can get efficiencies there. Uh, a lot of it is not just about money and paying doctors appropriate amounts of money, but it's also about efficiencies, cutting the backlog. So to, to the extent that we can utilise AI for that. But also it's curing diseases. I often say if everybody had a computer on their desk where we had access to all sorts of information on a worldwide basis, we can cure all sorts of diseases. Maybe so. Megan, isn't it true, though, whenever you see a Tory, and I've seen a few of them after the budget talking, you know, it's almost like they're living in some kind of cloud cuckoo land. You know, they start telling us all these things, these great things that they've done. You know, we've got this great, you know, tech sector, the third biggest in the world. You know, we've done all this incredible kind of, you know, uh, wiring up of, of Wi-Fi around the country. Also not true. You know, they've done all manner of things that they want to boast about, but none of it makes any sense to me because... The, the country is, I mean, there's a word for it, but it begins with F, and I can't say it because it's not nine o'clock. 
Um, it does feel like that. There are a lot of policies where, uh, if you do list them, it sounds like these great advances we're making. The problem is this is an election year and no one, as you say, no one can notice these. No. My life has not been changing with a lot of these announcements. Yeah, of course, why? Wi-Fi is amazing, AI is amazing. I don't love... If you could get Wi-Fi, I don't, that's fine. And I don't love AI, but Pandora's box has been opened yeah. and we are in a good position to be at the forefront position, of it. Yeah. So I don't... I do like things like that. However, I would have loved to see, and I've, I've got to get some tweets now calling me a warmonger as I did last time, but I'd love to see a defence budget that invests yeah. in UK defence. Well, defence... We need it. Yeah, we, we was... talked to Chris Parry later on about another story, which is a fascinating story about SAS officers being prosecuted by their own government for yeah. doing their jobs, effectively. But, yeah, defence um, experts have been calling for more money for defence. It didn't particularly come through. Now. It, most of our defence budget goes on things that people wouldn't even think about. Pensions, yeah. We, we, ageing population, but it should have gone to money for defence, investing in UK companies mm. that would have, of course, this stuff would go to aid to Ukraine as it often is, but we also need stuff in our reserves. Mm. We have nothing in reserves. Right. This would have been a great time for growth in British business. And yes, of course, that money comes, as you say, comes from taxpayer, like yeah. a lot of other things. But it does create growth. It does stimulate yeah. growth. And it's and always the way, is, isn't it? Yeah. With, with all these sort of things, it's a balancing act. You need to yeah. turn say that you'll give away with one hand and... and, and yeah, but they've been doing a balancing act for a long time. And the problem with most of these budgets is that they're all short term. Yeah. And this one's been criticised again today for being sort of two to three years uh, ahead, as opposed to 15 years no, ahead, you're, you're 10 absolutely... years ahead. And we've been doing this kind of government now probably since about the that's, beginning yeah, of time. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had proper infrastructure, you know, requirements dealt with over the, co the course of time. No. We, we, we always talk about Nick Clegg yes. saying back in 2012, well, we, it's going to take 10 years to build a nuclear plant, so there's no point in doing it. Well, it's now 2024, 12 years later, we yeah. and we still don't have one, and we could have had one, and that's the kind of thing I think that people expect governments to do. Oh, no, absolutely. You know, instead absolutely of just going from we one... We need more long-term yeah. joint, right. joint up planning. joint up planning. We are crying out for that. And I think the Tories have not been expecting to win for some time, so there hasn't been long-term right. planning. But before, on budgets, it, not 14, 15 years ago, budgets would have had commitments to 15 years. Yeah. They would have. They wouldn't have cared about the next government. But you're right, there is a new kind of culture about. And no one wants Labour in... No Tory wants Labour in six years' time. Should they be elected, that's likely to be talking about a victory that mm. was a Tory policy. Well, well, that's the other thing, is what's happened. They sort of force whoever... Whichever party's in government next, they're going to have to put up taxes to pay for these... And they've already said, haven't they, Labour, that if they get in, yeah. they're not going to make any promises that they can't yeah. keep because they're going to find there probably isn't any money. So they've already kind of... You you know, you know, hobbled themselves no, and I, said, well, I, I, don't absolutely. expect too much from us because there won't be anything uh, to provide with. And there's all this talk about when we talk about no, no, 2p or not 2p yeah. and what it was going to be. Uh, by doing it on income tax, I understand, would have cost about 14 billion right. because it was the national insurance thing, it was 10 billion. So they right. saved 4 billion there. The non-DOM thing they sort of nicked, for, if you like, from, from Labour. Yeah. Uh, but and they sort of, they stole their thunder, if you like. That's raised an extra 3 billion. Mm. But you need to put the other side of the equation and say, look, this is where we're going to be spending the money. And that's why I think right. emphasise the AI, for me, was the most exciting thing. But they need to address these other issues yeah. as well. But they're wasting so much money on so much uh, of, of the stuff that they don't need to spend yeah. money on. I mean, we'll be talking again later on about 15 million now a day they're wasting on migrants. You know, they don't seem to have any kind of idea no. of when that's going to end. No. And all we know that it's going to just keep going up and up and up and up, billions and billions and billions of pounds later, uh, and the country suffers. It's ridiculous. Anyway, thanks, guys.